Hello everyone and welcome to another PWN Design Studio Discovering Geoglyph to video, not tutorial, but discovering video. And in this video, I'll be going over the archipelago macro. And I'll go ahead and just read you off the description here. And what it says is, with this one robust device, you can generate an entire archipelago and archive or achieve that realistic shattered islands look. Archipelago gives you full control over scale, coastal versus central island bias, sprawl of the main body, and optional built-in erosion. So that's really nice. It's optional. You don't have to use it. You can also opt to utilize a user-drawn layout as the shape guide instead of the built-in fractal. So that's another really awesome option. Um, then it says terrains can be further enhanced by adding a circling reef to create individual atolls or a cluster of reef fringed isles. So that's pretty cool. And uh, looking at that picture, looks like you get some really interesting uh, design. So let's go ahead and try something here. So there's the shape guide and we need to throw in the layout generator here and you connect it to there and now it's not going to use the fractal that's built in here it's going to use what we make here so if we go in here and uh, let's just go to where our layout view is and let's use the polygon tool and we'll just click and hold and it'll draw this island looking shape and that's way too big so we need to um, I guess we can increase the main extents. That will be sufficient. Now let's go ahead and go back into here, our shape list. Make sure we have that one selected. Uh, let's use breakup, so that I'll use fractal breakup. Let's go in there and edit that, make it really rough. There we go. And uh, let's go into the um, edit tool here and let's look at some of this stuff so let's see if we can get more of an island look like that okay that's good so let's keep that and let's go back here and look at it here so there we go there's our island ish anyways it's not perfect kind of a uh, dinky there so let's add another generator um, let's add another layout generator and let's also put in an inverse filter or inverter let's invert that but let's go in here first and let's draw a circle just in there like that <clears throat> and uh, make sure the main extents are is covering that and again we'll just go back into that one and use breakup and we'll keep this one a little bit less harsh and make sure we can select our circle and let's bring it in a little bit so it's not as large like that and like that maybe a little more there we go now let's see what we have once we hook up both of these so there's our invert and a combiner We'll combine these two like this. Hopefully, this will work. Again, I'm just barely starting to use this, so this will be the first time I've played with it. And it looks like it's not really matching right here with the inverter, uh, or at least this layout and this one. So, what we need to do is uh, let's go back in here and check out these settings real quick. add no so it looks like it looks like we're just gonna be able to get the best from average and I want to use maybe that but let's go this is kinda of frustrating so that's supposed to be inverting and this let's let's move this so it's more in the middle and there we go that's a little bit better now let's go back into the combiner and increase the 
averaging, maybe the add. And that's not going to make it do anything. So we might need another filter here where it's the uh, bias and gain filter. And we need to decrease the height of this somehow. Well, I'm not going to worry too much about it, so I'm just going to go back into this and average it again. We want a little bit more of that inverted part coming in, so maybe like right there. Now, let's look at, and the reason why I did that is in the hopes that maybe I can get the similar look, look to this where they have that big open water area that looks like they might be using an invert filter on a um, on a generator but I didn't necessarily get that look so we'll just play around with this so sprawl um, is what the word means so I couldn't give you a, an exact definition of what sprawl means but you can just kinda see what it does in there uh, then there's stratification which mostly everybody should know um, those are just the terraces f steps uh, t so to speak then there's smoothing, which smooths the stratification or not. Then there's the island and coast ratio. So you can change this to make it more like a coast or more like an island. And the more you go over this way, I'm assuming it looks more like an island. The more you go this way, it looks like a coast. Though the options I have are a little bit uh, hard to see that. So let's just opt to use um, the built-in fractal it has. And now you can really see what the sprawling does. And if we bring it back down this way, it looks like we might be able to get a good looking coast. Um, and then when we play with the coast or the island, it looks like, yep, yeah, exactly. So this over here looks more like an island, over here it looks more like a coast. Um, so I'm going to go with a little bit more towards a coast. And here's that reef formation. So if we turn this down, you can see that all those little uh, reef like areas go away they don't they're not there anymore so uh, like the little uh, hills mountains whatnot or you know the noise that's in this or area right here they're not there anymore uh, then there's the scale which obviously just increases or decreases the scale so you can make a really cool like beach area right here like this might be a continent beach uh, country or something right here and this will be the entire coastal beach for it. Uh, then there's warp and this just warps the terrain as you can tell. Too much warping might not be a good thing though a little bit might be just fine so I'm gonna go with a little higher value but not so much that it's completely changing the terrain. Then there's the detail and like any sliders that, that says detail it's just going to decrease or increase the detail uh, or also known as the noise. Then there's the coast erosion. So the coastal erosion is just like the coastal erosion that you get in the natural tab here for World Machine. You change this and you can see how that's affecting the coast there. Uh, so there's really high coastal erosion when it's all the way up, which I actually really like. Now what I notice is that if you enable the water level here, when you change the water level, it actually adjusts the coastal erosion as well in real time. So if your water level, if your water level is at 1155, it's going to erode the coast based on that level. So you don't have to go in there and manually change it, which is really cool. I like that. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of water here. Maybe, uh, actually, you know what? No, let's not add any. Let's go ahead and build it. So I'm going to increase the size. I'm going to keep it at 1024 and this builds relatively quick about seven seconds is all that took didn't take very long at all and we have this really awesome beach with these little reefy areas and then we have the mountains and little hills back here so this looks really cool you can make a really nice um, ocean scene right here with this and there's that reef right there there's another reef so they're all over the place. This looks pretty cool. What you might want to use with this though is right here we're getting a lot of noise. So we can go in there and turn the detail down 
uh, but then we might not get enough detail. So let's go ahead and throw on the kill spike, which I know I use this one a lot, but it's just so good. Like it's good to use on a lot of things. I'm just going to use these uh, default settings and let's see what this looks like. There we go. So a lot of the spikes were destroyed in the process, which you know we kept a lot of the detail, but we don't have any of the annoying spikes. So this looks this looks really good, and it doesn't take very long to make. Uh, you just plop the macro in there and change your settings. Usually just the scale and whether or not you want it to be an island or a coast, uh, and then you just change the settings. So with that, let's go in and actually decrease it to or change the values to be more like an island, and let's see what that looks like. I'm assuming that this one's not going to take nearly as long to build. Oh, it took about the same, a little bit longer just because of that kill spike, but not too different. And there's our little uh, island with lots of warping. So we might want to go in there and turn down the warping a little bit on the island. But you can see there's the coast for the island and here are these, those, those little uh, reefs. So this is really cool. So that's Archipelago. That's a really nice looking uh, macro. Let's look at another one. This one's the crater. And reading the description on this, it's uh, Quad Spinner recommends to use it with the alien landscape. But I'm not going to use it with that uh, just because I'm a rebel. No, it's because I'm just going to show them one by one and kind of mix in with other things. It also recommends to use it with Pockmark. So let's go ahead and look at crater and pockmark and you just connect the two here and here's the crater let's increase the scale just so it's easier to see and then there's the distortion you can see that's just distorting the crater impact area then these rings are really cool so when you increase the rings they give out these little rings that you can see on the sides kinda like something was swirling when it hit almost and uh, you can a lot of the time when I was looking at it I was thinking, wow, this might be a really cool thing to use in a video game because there's little pathways almost that leave. I'm not sure if that's the intention, but they look like little pathways that you can take to walk up the crater. And you can see those are the circles right here. So it just kind of gives it a little like circular stratification look. And these are those little paths I was talking about. You can start right here. You can walk all the way up and come down into the crater. So this is pretty cool. And, and the crater uh, macro gives these really nice edges right here. You can see that right here. Really nice edge. So this is a cool macro. I thoroughly enjoy it. it I can see a lot of uses for this, especially if you're making like uh, a space scene or maybe a video game that's taking place on a different planet. It would be really cool. Then there's pock marks, which this would be kind of like rock and rubble that splashed after the impact, um, or maybe an explosion happened, and this is what you would use um, after. So we'll take a look at this, and we'll turn the strength up to be about half, and then the clustering, you can see, if you keep your eye over there, you can see how much that's affecting the terrain already. So we don't want too much. We want a little bit so we can see them. So like right there, perhaps. And the depth is just how deep these are. So we don't want them too deep. And then fusion, fusion I've noticed is it takes this macro and kind of fuses it with the underlying macro almost. So it blends in a little bit more is what I've noticed. I could be completely wrong, but that's just what it looks like to me. So we'll just go with a fusion of 10. And the steepness is just the inside. If you look at the edge of the uh, pockmark, it's either super straight or it's more rounded. And that's all this is. So we're just going to keep it mid. And let's go ahead and build that. And both of these build really quickly. So you're not waiting a long time to get results. And there's the puck marks. You can see them right here. You can see them all the way up here. And I've noticed that with puck marks, if you have a lot, the strength is really high and you have a really large cluster effect, you're going to get some spiky areas. So you're going to want to use like the kill spike macro in here to kind of smooth those out a little bit or just turn down the strength. But that's that. It's kind of like that Swiss cheese look you find on the moon. So that looks pretty cool. I like that. So 
That is the crater and pockmark macro. So this video, I talked about Archipelago, which you can make coasts or even islands with super easy that look miraculous. I also talked about the crater macro, how you can make impact crater looks for like maybe your space scene or video game. And then I looked, showed you the, the pockmarks macro, which put in these little holes and divots, almost smaller craters inside of your, your scene as well. So I'll end the video here. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please visit my website at www.pwndesign.com. Comment, rate, subscribe, and share. That is always helpful. The more you guys show that you appreciate me, the more I want to make these for you guys. And my followers are extremely awesome. I owe everything to you guys. So thank you, and stay tuned for the next video.